Hi everyone, welcome back to this final part of this video series on getting started with Ableton Live Lite. So in the last video, I showed you how to add a vocal sample to the track. In this video, we're gonna finish off the track by adding some audio effects, building up a quick arrangement in session view, and then recording our track into the arrange view so we can export it. Let's go. Okay, so let's try adding some audio effects to some of the tracks. Now, if we go in the browser to the audio effects section, you can see that the audio effects here are grouped into lots of different categories. So we have delay and loop, drive and color, dynamics, EQ, pitch and modulation, reverb and resonance, and some utilities as well. So all of these add different characters to the sound. And for example, reverb, this allows us to create different spaces. So we can make an audio recording sound like it's playing inside a cathedral, a concert hall, or just under a tunnel, for example. So let's try doing that for this vocal sample. So I'm just gonna click on solo, and let's just go into the second scene. And I'm going to just drag over the reverb onto that track there. There we go, so you can already hear that it's having uh, an effect, it's making it sound like it's in a bit of a, a bigger space. We can increase the decay time. And we can also change the balance between the original dry signal and then what we call the wet signal, which is the reverb. And if we listen to that in context with the rest of the track. Now what we're doing is mixing the track. We're trying to get a good volume balance between the different channels. But as I mentioned in a previous video, we do have to be very careful that we're not gonna go into the red and clip. So I'm selecting all of the channels here while holding down shift. And I'm just going to bring down the level very slightly, just to make sure that on the right hand side, we're not clipping and going into the red. Now another effect I quite like to use on this vocal sample is a delay. When we added the reverb effect, we used what's called an insert, so we inserted it directly onto this track. With these returns, it means that we can actually share effects between different tracks by using these send controls here. So as part of the template set I used, you can see that I already have a reverb and delay effect on each of these return channels. So I'm just gonna use return B, which is this delay. I'm just gonna solo this, and you'll see that as I increase the send amount here on this track, it's sending more of this vocal channel to the delay effect on return B. Let's just turn off the reverb for a minute so we can just hear it better. There we go. Now we can adjust some of the controls on here. So feedback controls uh, how much it delays. And we can also set the timing of the delay. So I'm gonna change the beat division here to quarter notes. I also want to add some filtering so that it's taking off some of the low end frequencies. Great, so let's put the reverb back on now and take the solo off. So that's sounding quite lush now, that vocal. The next thing I want to do is to also add some reverb to this mini log. Now you can see that it's automatically named these tracks according to the presets that I was using, but it hasn't done that for this track, which is the mini log. So we can do that ourselves. Good to do some housekeeping. So I'm just selecting that track there and I'm gonna select Command R and that's gonna allow us to type in the name of this track. So I'm gonna type in mini log. There we go, just so we know what it is. Great, so let's just solo this. And we could try adding some of that delay to this sound as well. Great, and let's, uh, let's put some reverb on that as well, why not? Maybe slightly less of it there. And 
this is where we can start adjusting the volume levels as we go. So I'm feeling now that that riff is a little bit too quiet and maybe the vocal is a bit loud, so I'm just gonna adjust those. Now let's go way back to the drums and uh, I want to make those drums sound a little bit punchier. So we can go to the audio effects here and utilities and audio effects rack and there's a section here called mixing and mastering and this looks like an appropriate preset it's called drums punchy so let's drag that over there turn it off and on so we can compare Now it sounds to me like it's slightly increasing the high frequencies there, um, which means that the hi-hat sounds a little bit louder. So let's try bringing down that hi-hat, which is here, just very slightly. Brilliant. We can also add some basic mastering, and mastering is normally the final stage of the production. Um, where we want to make the track as loud as possible and sound as good as possible on the radio or in a club. So we can stay in this mixing and mastering section here. And let's choose Master Punchy Dance and just drag that onto the master channel there. Turn it on and off, off and on. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a very rough arrangement in the session view and then record that arrangement live into the arrange view. So this is where we can start working with these scenes a little bit more and duplicating some and taking out some of the clips uh, to create a very rough arrangement. So I'm going to take this first scene here and I'm going to duplicate it a couple of times. And let's start the song without the beat. So I'm just going to delete that first clip there and let's take out this pad maybe as well and also the mini log. So we're just starting off with the vocal and the bass. Great and let's go to the second scene now, take out the drums and maybe the mini log and let's just bring in the pad sound. Okay, and then we can bring in the beat. Maybe we'll hold off on the mini log as well. Turn up the vocal slightly. Turn down the beat slightly. Now, this is where the drums come in. Um, but we've also got that mini log, so I'm gonna duplicate that scene and then just save that mini log arpeggio so we just have the additional 16th hi-hats coming in at that point. And then bring it in here. And I'm going to duplicate it again and this time I'm going to take out the drums so we just have a little space. So we then go into the piano section. Here we go. Great, so we've got a very rough arrangement. Um, and what we can do now is we can record it into the arrangement view. So just so we can get all the tracks in view, I'm gonna press this H button here, which is the optimize arrangement height. And let's go back over here and we're going to hit record and we're going to trigger these scenes and it's going to record them into the arrange view. Now one final thing that we can do before we actually record it in is play around with the tempo. So at the moment we're at 120 which is a very classic kind of house tempo. Let's try increasing it a little bit. Maybe 125. There we go, so that gives it a little bit more energy. So this time I'm gonna press this arrangement record button and we're going to trigger the first scene. 
Now I'm going to flick over to the arrange view here and you can see it recording in. Let's try the next one. So if we now go back over to the Arrange view, you can see that every action I made has been captured. And if we just press the Back to the Arrangement button here, we can then play the track from this Arrange view. And this is where we can really refine our arrangement and we can take things in and out, we can change lengths of the clips, we can do all sorts of things. So how do we get this out to the world? How do we get people to listen to the demo that we've just done? What we're gonna do is we're gonna export it. So the first step for this is to go to the loop brace here. So just drag the loop start to the start of the track and the loop end to the end of the track. And then we're gonna to go to export audio. And there are various settings here. We can turn the analysis file off. Um, we can put normalize on, that's gonna make it as loud as possible and you can select the file type as well. We'll keep that as a WAV and click on export. And you can select where you want that to go. So let's just open this up a little bit. This is the project that we were working on. Uh, let's select that, call it house beat one and then save. And let's look for that file now. So let's go to here, Ableton Projects, House Beat, and there is our file, House Beat 1. And we just press space to audition it. There is our track and we can upload it to SoundCloud or send it to a record label or send it to a vocalist and develop the track further. Now one final and very important thing I wanted to remind you of is to save your project. So go up to the file menu and click on save live set. And that means you can come back to the project and carry on working on it. Okay, so there we are. I hope you enjoyed this series of videos on Ableton Live Lite and it gave you the confidence to start producing your own tracks. Please have fun experimenting with your own ideas and I hope to be back soon.